about the intuition because I would start having these feelings, you know, certain things. And, and yet it was still kind of woo-woo for me that time, you know, we're talking. Today on Mind Body Business, Patty Markham Pearson joins us to talk about our energy bodies, our subconscious beliefs, and the gateways to discover our authentic selves. Enjoy the show. So, Patty, can we start off right now with you telling us who you are? <laughs> We know who you are, but I'd love okay. to hear you tell us who you are. Okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm Patty, and I I was a nurse in my prior life. You know, we're talking uh, early 80s. And, um, and I started to get um, distressed with the medical field. I tried a million areas, and, and, um, and it got to a point where I started wondering about the intuition because I would start having these feelings, you know, certain things. And... And yet it was still kind of woo-woo for me that time. You know, we're talking 90s. And I couldn't, I just was learning more about nutrition. I had a daughter with ear infections. And so I started really realizing, oh, dairy can be causing these ear infections. And learning more about nutrition. I had a daughter with ear infections. And so I started really realizing, oh, dairy can be causing these ear infections. And doorway. Started talking to naturopaths. And, and then I'd go to work and I couldn't give this pile of pills to elderly. I'm not knocking anything. I'm just saying this is me, right? Going, they don't know how this works. I can't talk to them about taking probiotics or blah, 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 you know? <laughs> and so I started to learn about um, holistic healing and went into a, um, a form called electrodermal screening. So the early stages of um, awakening, so to speak, in the bigger picture was physical healing, right? Nutrition, detoxifying. I'm lear learning about all the crazy toxins we have you know, in this beautiful area, even heavy metals and mercury and did that for a while. And life gives you experiences, right? And trained in a couple other areas. And then I get this, my beautiful husband of 18 years goes off to work and was, and, and was killed in a car accident and he was out of town. So it was like a, um, uh, he disappeared. I never saw a body. I never saw a car. And, um, and that was my big awakening to more of the spiritual realm because I was in a very um, fundamentalist Christian, very conservative religion at that time. And, um, and I started having very mystical experiences after he passed and he came to me with messages and my old beliefs were like, this can't be real. Right. So here's where intuition and all that starts kicking in. You're going, I have to trust what I see, sense, feel, and know versus what somebody told me. And that's scary. You know, everything you think you've been told and like, I don't believe much of this. Or what do I believe? And many of us have that dark night of the soul. And I think I heard, you know, Kiva, you mentioned one of your hard times that woke you up, right? And so that was the start of this exploring this, the spiritual and bringing the emotional, mental, spiritual into the physical. I love healing. I know I'm a natural healer. My hands started heal, heating up, you know, touching people and some pains could go away. Started seeing and feeling things beyond. And, um, and that hasn't stopped. I continue to expand that and grow that. And so I've studied as a medical intuitive and a quantum healer. And I, I had to write a book. Part of my healing was about that experience of my husband dying and me discovering intuition, how to help other people. And I do now to trust that gut because um, what also came forward during that when I was in that dark time was old sexual abuse, right? That is fairly common, it seems like. Um, and and I, um, I knew that you, when you look back as a child, I, a little, I knew that, that I, I didn't feel right around this person. But the adult said, he's okay, da-da-da-da-da, he's got the candy, blah, blah, blah. And so that became one of my goals, teach people to trust their intuition. Let's listen to the children, right? They have it instead of just pushing our beliefs on it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been an ever, ever refining, uh, expanding journey of bringing in more of this, raising our consciousness, levels of consciousness for healing. And that's part of what the quantum is. So a lot of the things you said, I'm, I'm very well familiar with, and I've been mm -hmm. reading. Literally made the hair stand up. And I've, too. And I've been like, reading about for quite a few years now. But can we dive a little bit deeper into what that actually, what it actually means in daily life and daily practice? How, okay. how does one, first of all, what is intuition to you, and and how do you distinguish between mental intuition, which is the acquisition of knowledge, and you 
that most of us base our decision making on or the gut, the heart, the feeling of like you, you get into a car, you know, for example, I have a, I have a quite daily practice of pulling over and giving hitchhikers rides and giving people I change people's tires that's just kind of something to do and when I, every I'm always told you shouldn't do that you know you never know who's, who's going to get in the car with you and I honestly have kicked a couple of people out of my car just because I felt okay. fear I yes. felt fear when they got in the car I can't describe it but that's only happened maybe two times so in your experience and because you were you were formerly part of the Christian world which teaches you nothing but information to control you and fear-based mongering and all that sort of stuff all that's a whole other part all conditional logic right it's all based upon conditional logic if you do this you'll get this reward you know kind of like the candy in your sexual story Mm -hmm. you were talking about right Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. how does one sorry i don't have a filter i'm just going to open up so i'm fine fine um, how does one first of all recognize that if all their life they were told to follow a specific parameter specific rules specific guidelines but they they may have always had something else talking to them. They just never really knew how to to listen to that. But what's the difference between that and your? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, well, number one, we start often, I believe, by noticing when we didn't trust the gut, right? I think that's one of the best ways we go, wow, my gut was telling me to take that other route and I took this one and there's construction. I'm stuck here forever. You know, it's, and, and it's not, you know, intuition is that it just hits you. It just comes in. You don't sit and dwell on it. It's the mind. If we're sitting and trying to figure something out and we get our answer, that's more the mind. Intuition is just there. And, and we all have it in a different way. It works through our five senses. You know, we're either seers, hear, some people just hear a message. It can be like their own voice or another. Um, we see, we feel, we just know. Oh, dear Claire Cognizance, you just know. and some as we develop them and trust them then we use more than more than one like lisa just demonstrated she's a feeler she's a clairsentient right you felt felt that we all have that to some degree now in our day to day it ta- that takes the practice we're so used to in this society of being here in the mind and using the mind it takes practice that's that the more we slow down you know the meditation the mindfulness, the present, we start to get that connection to that voice, that intuition, which is tied to your spirit self. And, and even the best of them don't always know exactly when we're using it for sure. But I mean, I've had so many experiences like this one. I'll just give a quick blip. I was leaving my house some years ago and I was heading somewhere. All of a sudden I got the blip, call my, my in-laws. I called there. She said, oh, Patty, Jim, my father-in-law's can't breathe. I said, oh, is he, um, did you call 911? She goes, yes, but they're taking forever. I'm like, I'll be there. I got there. He was being wheeled out by the ambulance. He was having a massive heart attack. I got there in perfect timing to pick up my mother-in-law, follow the ambulance, get to the hospital where he coded and he died. And I was able to be with her and the family. Now, tell me that was an intuition that just said, why did I have to call my in-laws at that moment, right? Mm. So do you all have, I'm sure if you look, you've had, you've had experiences like that. But when we're really dwelling on something, usually it's best to just let it go. Go gardening, go for a walk, go listen to music and pop your answers. will feel, you'll know what feels better. I, you know, I'm more the feeler, what feels better. And that's usually my gut or guidance. What doesn't, right? Your gut's churning when something's like, like the people, hitchhikers, what was your signal? Yeah, it was hard to put a pulse on it. If you had to ask me to describe it, I couldn't. It was just uh, a general mm-hmm. feeling of there's something off about this person. Mm-hmm. And so I, I mm-hmm. actually pulled over on the side of the road and said, hey, this is as far as I can go. You have to get out now. And, and that was that. But I honor you listening to. You know, that's what I teach people is let's, let's learn our body signals. Some people, it's a clenching of the throat, our truth chakra, right? Mm-hmm. Tingling on the skin. Um, me, gut is a big one. What, what is that? What is that? What do you truly believe that is? When you have that intuitive feeling, when you have that tingling of your oh, on your forehead, uh, you have that yeah. sensation. What is that? That's your greater self reading and picking up energy, knowing what's going on. You know, you know, you're you're more than your physical body. You're well aware of that. And I know. How far out does Devo go? <laughs> you know, it's our interpretation of that intersection of who we are 
intersecting with all these convergence of energies around us, right? I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I understand that, that we're that this is just a physical shell that we're occupying currently. But what is the other side of it? What is our spirit? What is that? What is that subconscious that that is embodying who we are? What is that? What literally? What do you think it is? You grew up for thirty some years thinking that that you were part of a a physical world where there was a celestial being that governed everyone, created everyone, manifested everything that we believed in. And if we didn't follow by those rules, then we were fucked. And then we found out that that's just a big fantasy fairy tale like everything else. So what hap- what is the other side of that? What is the connected? What is the what is the intuitive piece that Lisa and I share that drew us together three and a half years ago? Or what is it that gives <laughs> us the goosebumps? Like, what is that in your opinion? Okay, you are a spark of the divine. We all were oneness at one time. And we've refracted, refracted, refracted. Okay? And when we have somebody that's a true, so then we chose this planet this time. We're not the only planet. (laughs) We're the densest of the dense of them. And we chose to be here at this time for this culmination of this planet. We can keep reincarnating and coming back here if we want. But some of us aren't choosing to come back to learn through pain. I, I want higher vibe. I want a higher place. <laughs> and so this, you're a divine being. And as we remember more of who we are, you'll get more of that lineage. One of the things I do is cosmic life regressions. And we connect with that soul essence. And we do carry um, that, I mean, that whole goodness of us, you know, peace, love, joy is all there. And yet there may be some soul fragments or fractures that from traumatic lifetimes that we have the opportunity to heal. And that's another piece of what we do. So we're working through that in in each lifetime to the level we choose to wake up. So you too could, if you're, you know, true um, union soul people that know each other, um, often shared a soul way back when. And then there's whole karmic relationships. That's another whole, you know, where we have to heal from a past life, meet these certain people. And um, so I know that might be a convoluted answer, but there's some a fantastic answer. So can I just ask you too, like your, your very traumatic experience with your husband, mm-hmm. do you think without that happening that your pathway would be to where you are now? Would you have Not at all. had Not those at all. experiences? And, Not and- at all. So it was so traumatic. I had a, I really had a good marriage and he and I, you know, it was one of those where I knew, I mean, we met and we got married very quickly. We had the six kids, you know, we, and we got along beautifully, best friends. And it was so traumatic for me to heal from that. It took years. And, and I would go to grief supports and these people had seemed to be moving on. And I'd say, aren't you pissed? Aren't you so angry at God? No, no. And I'd be, what's wrong with me? Well, as I kept going on my healing journey, this is like part two of my book. My book was just the awakening part, but the, this part is, I didn't know it at the time, is I've had flashes of past lives with him where we weren't always husband, wife, that d- dynamic, where he died before me and I gave him I thought of this lifetime. I was to discover who I really am, which is that soul, divine, God essence, eternal self, and live who I am without him. Makes sense. A lot. <laughs> so, do you think that how many years ago did your husband pass away? It's it's eighteen now. It's 18, a long time. Eighteen years ago. Do you think that your path, regardless of the crossroads along the way, still would have led you to where you are today, even if your husband hadn't taken the road that he took, and your life as a registered nurse hadn't had the pivotal moments that had occurred to you that were yeah. kind of your catalysts for change? Do you honestly think that? regardless of, let me rephrase this, is your life predestined to, to be fulfilled one way or the other and that's all there is to it? Or do you have the control and autonomy? To As a soul, well, we have both. We have free will at all times. You know, you may get downloads from divine helpers and they, they always tell you, you have free will. But I, on my soul journey, I know my came here to wake up this time. Had he and I, but there's no wrong if I didn't. Okay, does that make sense? There's no what? Say that again. Say that again. There's no wrong. There's no yeah, wrong. Really, you know, that's how we look at it. There's, there's no wrong. If I didn't, I could come try again, whatever. But 
had he stayed living or died and I didn't wake up to the spiritual who I am, I believe, um, I mean, I believe I'd probably be pretty medicated and depressed and miserable because this is who I am, what I do. And so you don't believe that you're here to experience a linear path. You believe that you're not here at all. to crossroad, diverge, all sorts of different tributaries, et cetera. What if the theory of, because I understand the way I've understood a few things is that prior to you coming to this time and space, you made an agreement with your husband, your children, your whoever it is that's been part of your life here. You made an agreement with them that you would join yes. them here on this planet at this time and space, and you would have these experiences, et cetera, in order for you to grow and evolve, et cetera. So with that logic, that almost almost sounds like you have some sort of a predestined path in mind when you came here. Yes. I, and your I husband's do. death was maybe part of that growth for you. Yes. That was part of that plan. Yes, 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 yes. I do agree with that. You know, that, um, yeah, as, as a divine being choosing to come to here and going, okay, these are going to be the experiences that I'm going to go through to be catalyst to, to wake up, to fulfill my divine destiny of who I am. And he agreed and that I, he was going to come here and die from a traumatic car accident because that was okay. his experience. Do you think that that's true? And then because of his yeah. well, experience? Yes. Yes. And part of me goes, I'm not certain as far as it was going to have to be a car accident, you know, that he was going to exit. And, and some say, you know, we have, we have a few different points in that life where we could have exited. And on that subconscious level, we chose, oh, it's not quite time. And he had some close calls before that. Mm -hmm. So in some way, I think there's that little bit of leeway yet that he had to leave early. Mm -hmm. And I was thankful that he did, um, you know, those earlier ones he didn't, at least at that point, my kids weren't little babies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just, just in saying what, you know, and this is, this is me just, um, you know, I, I'm not a personal, uh, I don't have all your personal information on your marriage, but obviously it was a very good one without your your level of contentedness, you wouldn't have done this extra searching to become who you are as well, because you were contented in your marriage too. So it's that extra step. Now, you are absolutely gifted at what you do, but us us people out here that don't have this gift that you have, how can we increase our intuition? How can we tap into that more so that we have more divine guidance in our lives? Beautiful. Good question. Um, you know, everybody has it. You know, some, I love the analogy of, you know, and anybody can learn to play piano and some are a bit more of a virtuoso. And, and that is truly, you know, what I enjoy helping people. And there's many people that do, but it's in your day to day, you know, stopping and tuning in. Um, I love a practice that's simple. It's a, you know, one hand on the heart, one on the head and just breathing. Connect these two. Because truly, your heart, if you follow Heart Math Institute or any of those, you know, there's a portal here. It has a brain that's greater than our mind. It's stepping out of some of the old paradigms. And usually, we don't do that till something gets uncomfortable enough, right? Then we start going, oh, maybe I need to listen or slow down. And this doesn't feel good. You know, hanging out with these people just doesn't feel good anymore. So then we go, okay, I always have choice. What's my choice? Am I going to keep just pushing into this because it's the right thing to, you know, they think it, I have to? Or is it because, no, I'm going to start listening to this feeling, this voice, this knowing what's best for me? Does that answer? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think what you said at the beginning, too, there's so many instances that we have been naysayers to our own intuition. Like you feel something and you're like, you know, you're either getting a creepy vibe from someone or just, and you don't, you don't listen. And after, you know, at some point you need yes. to trust, you need to trust. I, I, that's how I really, for my journey and many of my clients and students, it's like, oh, oh yeah, I now are clear when I didn't listen. So now how do I start practicing that? Learn your own body messages. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, today's society, every, we're bombarded, right? Yeah with so much how do we disconnect and slow down to really go going on here well i know i'm not going to pick up hitchhikers to test my intuition no you're not <laughs> good job <laughs> however as your guardian angel i might be able to intercede on that 
Question in your book, and the name of your book is Expanding Heart, and you're writing a part two of that now, but in your current book that you have out, it's called um, Expanding Heart. Is that correct? Yeah, a woman, one woman's journey from trauma to transformation. Okay. Yes. And, and, you, and you talk a lot about navigation through painful life challenges and, and you know, how to navigate that space. So, and I'm just playing devil's advocate. In the beginning, you talked about there's really no such thing as bad decisions. And sometimes bad decisions lead to pain or sometimes they, there's pain that you have no control of that enters your life, as in the case of your husband and anything else. But if those are part of our, if those are part of our pathway in order for us to, to grow and evolve, is part of your logic to deal with them working through those? And if so, how does that, how does, how does, I think a lot of people struggle with pain and so they dull themselves with drugs and narcotics. And absolutely. And alcohol, absolutely. All the different. Absolutely. And I think the biggest, I think the biggest thing that people struggle with, me included, not so much anymore, is that. You have to work through that pain some way, shape, or form. Like you can't just run from it. It's always going to be there if you keep. So, what would if you had thirty seconds to tell me to pass on to me some wisdom and 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 a device that I could use a coping mechanism for my pain? What would you employ? How does that work for you? Oh yes, beautiful, Erin. Again, we could talk so long on all of that. You know um, how we dull with our drug choice, whether they're over-exercising, sex, um, drugs, whatever, because we don't want to feel. We just so much don't want to feel. And pain isn't easy for the mind to sit with, to be with. We want to get rid of it. And I would encourage you, how can you sit and feel into that pain and ask, what is the message here? What is, it's a door opener to consciousness. Always, because pain is showing us a separation in some way. And it's being comfortable with it, being comfortable with it. Not that sometimes we don't take an aspirin. We do. I mean, some comfort for the body, and yet we're not running from it. And that's the big areas I like to really bring uh, awareness to people of how much we're running from our knowing, from our pain, from our past traumas. And that's, you know, if you've read a little bit about addictions, I love the work of Dr. Or Mate, or you say his name, Showing that there's all these traumas when there's these addictions that aren't being acknowledged. Pa- they're past traumas, is, is what you're referencing. Yes, yeah. very. And so much our subconscious, like my sexual abuse was so subconscious stuff, right? Um, that we, um, we're not consciously aware they're there until we slow down. And that's what, why so, some people can be alone or quiet. Because when they slow down, they're going to start to feel. Mm-hmm. And how comfortable can you feel to be to feel? No, no, let's get busy. Let's watch the news and let's get angry or let's, you know, overeat. I mean, I've done that. I love all the examples that you're giving. Like it's not, it's not drugs and alcohol. It's all those other things too, that you don't think that this is a diversion or, you know, something that you're avoiding yes. by working out. No, I'm taking care of my body or sex or any of those things. It, it's really oh. eye opening. We oh, yes, I've seen these, it very much. You're talking about these traumas, too, that, that may be hidden. Do you find, are, are they hidden in your body somewhere waiting to be discovered? Yes, and that's why a big awakening for a lot of people is an illness. You know, um, underneath, I've got clients with cancers. As a, that's, Now, that's the whole medical intuitive piece, right? What's the mental, phys, uh, mental emotional, spiritual of that illness? And there's patterns. You know, and most often it's stuffed emotions, stuffed angers, denied what's there. And um, so um, very much congestions in our energy field within our body or around us. Mm, Just waiting to be released. Exactly. Do you you find too, like I, I found in my life that not being intuitive, not being in touch or not trusting in that, I had so many like... Hindsight is fantastic, right? But so many yes. opportunities in my life that the universe, whatever you want to say, was shouting at me saying, you need to stop. You need to think about what's going on in your life. And just getting busy, whether it's, you know, I'm, I'm a mom and I'm trying to be perfect in my religion and I'm doing all these extra things and I'm helping out here and here and here and keeping busy, busy, busy. Mm-hmm. This is giving me more than one chance, more than one chance keeps telling me you need to stop you need to do yes. this you need to think about this 
And it may, you, you don't just get that one chance. You know, it's, it's very accommodating to give you this opportunity for growth and experience. And at some point, hopefully that you'll, you'll listen. It's not just that one oh, chance. I, I love that you say that. That is so true. Because if we just deal with the physical, you know, and get rid of a pain, it's going to come up somewhere else. And I've, t- you know, I've had lots of issues, physical, you know, back being blown out, right? Well, if you're not going to slow down, here's a way you can slow down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was, you know, the poster mother too for running around and never stopping or taking care of myself. Um, to uterine issues, that's a big one, right? That's a rich area, our sacral chakra. And I had traumas that were so stuffed in my uterus that, you know, fibroids were growing. I was able to heal those without having surgery, thankfully. Not that surgery is the best thing for some people, you know. Um, so you know, it, you'll get constant uh, um, opportunities if we're not, not listening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how do you based based on what some of them are subtle and then they get progressively yeah. louder and louder <laughs> until you're basically yes. over the head with it. <laughs> That's the say sometimes how many times I got to hit my head against the wall by four. I've had literal bad falls to say pay attention. Yeah. So how do you make that distinction between what you just asked her, which is your body is, is evoking some sort of pain, trying to tell you a message that there's something not right. One of your chakras is misaligned or your energy is being contorted or physically pain. Like you're having physical pain right now in your shoulder from carrying the camera around for every day. So how do you distinct, distinguish between her physical pain, which is real physical pain from trauma, carrying something, and her body trying to tell her that she needs to do something, needs to change something, needs to modify something? So I guess what I usually do myself and in clients is, is address it, address it on every one of those levels, because, you know, it's always a, a pain is an intersection of many energies coming together. Mm-hmm. And I can't ever really say for certain that it's this spiritual aspect of you not loving yourself. And it's part of this, yeah, repetitive movement. So let's look at all these, you know, definitely shift up the physical and then, you know, oh, how much of my pain is getting proved or not. Um, and what else is there? Because there, there's always other layers. I mean, we're, we're human beings swimming in this dimension um, with a lot of stuff. <laughs> but again, it's, it's like what you said. Once you do take that moment, whatever that, that thing is that has caused you to slow down, if you do take that introspection, you do see that you, were, you had that intuition. You had those feelings before you just covered them up. The messages were already received and you've, you've buried them somehow and just kept, just kept keeping on sort of thing. Yes, absolutely. Because sometimes that message is saying, um, stop eating this, <laughs> you know, because food carries a conscious. Or maybe that message is saying not to be with this certain partner. And sometimes we don't want to hear that stuff, right? So, yeah, we're going to keep going, going, going till mm-hmm. maybe something bigger happens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you find as well, okay, this is getting off track too, because you had a... a We've been on track. <laughs> oh, it's just so interesting. And, uh, you know, we're trying to touch on everything. It's getting around and it's good. Yeah, as opposed to being on track this whole time with nothing that we said we were going to talk about. It's okay. Um, it's okay so right? you're, you're perfect mom, perfect Christian, perfect, you know, you had that life. And then, you know, your beliefs have changed. So what's happened with that perfect life those people that were you know i'm i'm faith driven i'm doing all the right things i'm checking off all the boxes and then you're going in a different direction was there acceptance there or did you basically create a whole new friendship group on the side is there crossover how did you find that transition great great question lisa um and as i advise my clients um so many of them are like the first one in their family to be very intuitive and like going some of this doesn't make sense what i've been fed doesn't make sense right so we need to su- find support outside of that paradigm you know whether it is you know even if it's not a religion if it's a you know just a family with certain beliefs or a partner or whatever they need just like i needed to find some support i read a book that blew me open and I'm, go- I'm sobbing. I'm like, I don't even understand the book, but I know it's speaking to my soul. Do I have one person in my life I can discuss this with? And I had one at that time. And that's when I, I was stepping, starting to step away from the old um, tribe, so to speak, right? And 
And so that helped. And then me getting in touch, I believe the universe supported me by bringing in new friends that were more open-minded, single moms, because I didn't want to be with couples anymore, right? That were open-minded. And, um, and so you'd have to have that, that outside support, somebody that supports you being you no matter what. I call, you know, love you unconditionally. Because our old paradigms, we're all playing in that. And those roles, they're not going to support you changing because then they got to look at themselves. And oh my it was very gosh. Serious. Yes. <laughs> right? They yeah. get triggered, but they're not conscious why they're triggered. They're yeah. saying, oh, you're bad. You're wrong, you know? And so, no, it was not easy. My whole family, you know, and whole network um, community, that was huge. You know, they live in a small area. You know, everybody knows everybody. And to keep trusting my path that I had to follow what was right for me. Or the highest good of all. And um, I believe it was. <laughs> you know, my children are flourishing. They're around the world. They're all doing their thing. And, um, I, and I'm happier than I've ever been. Happy. It's so interesting to me because, you know, if, if you base it on whatever your religious background is, you know, you, the faith that I was in was, you know, you come here to learn and to grow and to expand. And that's exactly what you're doing. But they become fearful of your expansion because it's not within their realm. And exactly what you said, that introspection, that maybe it's contagious. Maybe maybe I'm going to have to take a, a look inside my marriage, my family, what I'm doing with my life. And there's a lot of fear in that, isn't there? That Absolutely. Absolutely. Depending on their level of consciousness and what they're willing, you know. And, and as I continued, and I was willing to let them go to follow my path. So I get a little emotional. And... Um, and I follow, and what I see happen with my clients too is as you stay true to you, and my truth was how can I be more love and light on my journey? And as you stay true to you, I then, people, they trust you. They go, oh, okay, she's not just off on a whim. I trust, and, and I, my family's amazing. They love me as I am. So some and, of those and people, people were delivered to you, like you said, like you're, you feel like you're out on your own and then universe delivers. Yes, what you I need. Te- exactly. I tell my clients, ask, ask your helpers, guides, you know, say, show me, show me family, spirit family to, to, to love, to, to be with, to be my community. So I belong. We all have that sense of belonging. You know, we can connect with all these other helpers that aren't informed, but we need that. Pat, Patty, did a lot of those friends that, that you were talking about at the beginning of this journey of yours that were starting to alienate from you, have they circled back around and rejoined your your pack, so to speak? Um, my family's wonderful. I've, I, I let go of a lot of friends, and especially because so many of them were a couple friends, you know, that I was with my husband. And um, and they're not, I don't have a lot that are close, a few. Because you've had, Lisa had a similar experience in, in the sense of the church, but you've had a couple that now five years later, six years later, have actually yes. kind of circled back around and tried mm-hmm. to reconnect. Yes. With you. And, yes. and honestly, some, some of them have, um, it, it's interesting. I don't want to go into it too much, but it's interesting that they have come forward like crying, saying, I'm sorry I wasn't there. You know, they were dealing with things and it was, it was more about them than it yes. is about you. That's beautiful. And that is, that is true. When we mm-hmm. really get to, beyond our own wounds, feeling rejected, abandoned, which we may all have mm-hmm. down, look, mm-hmm. um, and go, oh, it, it really isn't about me. That's, that's beautiful. I have had some of that too. And I've had people, mm-hmm. because of the holistic healing too, come back and say, oh, Patty, I'm sorry I called you a witch and blah, blah, blah. I really get it now, you know, when it's all pretty mainstream. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. In the nineties, not so much. <laughs> well, yeah, things are just more accepted in in the last few years even than if you're talking about the nineties now. Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes. Is it more is it more accepting now because more and more people are waking up to it, or is it more accepting because that was just part of the natural order of things. I always get confused on that. Is it the next great fad? And so everybody thinks now it's suddenly chic and cool to be soul, you know, trying to find your soul purpose and all that sort of stuff. You know, you have yogis popping out of the woodwork every single day and half of it's not even yoga. So is that just part of the grand plan of everything? Well, I think it's a little both, you know, there's, there's authentic um, ones and there's, those that maybe are still ego driven, you know, um, and you know, there's always that wave, right? The, the initial ones that start and then the masses, you know, hopefully waken. And this lifetime, this 
well, especially 2020, we knew great awakenings were going to start happening this year. I didn't, we didn't know how, look what's been happening, right? Mm -hmm. The opportunities we are this lifetime, whether it even looks science, you know, the cycles within the cycles and all of that is, is a very unique one. And so is this this a time that we are just searching more? Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. So that's a good question. I I have a bunch of different theories, none of which I have any cogent idea around. Mm -hmm. You know, I was reading, listen to Greg Braden. I'm sure you're familiar with Greg Braden. I love Greg Braden. Where rid of 1% of a given population to make a difference, right? Yeah, and he's always, yeah. And he's always talking about the whole quantum physics ideation around the world works on cycles. You know, 25,000 years ago, the planet was under ice. Before that, 25,000 years ago, we were ruled in an indigenous capacity. Everybody were tribal communities. We're all doing ayahuasca teas and eating sciacil mushrooms, and we all work. And then 25,000 years before that, it was something completely different. So, and he's talking about now the, the and I'll send it to you if you've not heard of the intersection of the quantum elements, which is the alignment of stars and planets and all that sort of stuff the rotation of the planet in correlation with the sun, like all these different things. Yes. And it's a, he has real data, scientific data that shows from ice um, core files from the, from the North and South pole that show, you know, 25,000 years ago, everything that he's saying physically did exist. Yes. So mm-hmm. is it just all just one big simulated video game and we're just <laughs> keep repeating itself and then we grow and then I we know. Wave, move into the next plane and then the next wave of humans come in and then we have the chance to do the same thing like is that all this is kind of <laughs> i think it is i'm beginning more and more to think about yeah. <laughs> it's literally just the next wave of humanity or whatever we're going to be called this time is thrown into the mix Twenty five thousand years later they're wiped out the new ones brought in it's just like <laughs> part of that is that whole consciousness though you know we have the opportunity and we've had the opportunity at different intersections to lift and create the new earth, this higher vibe where everything doesn't have to be through pain and hardship and suffering. And, um, and sometimes we've missed it. So then that cycle comes around again. Mm-hmm. Why have I been such a slow learner? That's the question. Yeah, but you're still learning. But <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think terrible at video games. <laughs> well, you may have taken 30 years to, to, to wait for this thing. But if you were to look at your patterns in the last three years, you haven't been slow in any way, yeah. shape, or form. So That's because I'm getting older, and I don't have that much time left. I got to hustle now. <laughs> well, as my dear son even tells me, Mom, it's early in the game. And, you know, yeah. I'm turning 60 this year. And, and I'll say, oh, you know, what about this? Like, Mom, it's early in the game. So it's very early in the okay. game. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I guess I was going somewhere with with that little diatribe I just read. Okay. Continue. But quantum healing, quantum physics, you the intersection between the metaphysical, intuition, all the things that you're doing. Can you speak a little bit about that? What is quantum healing and, and how does that intersect with our daily lives? So that's lifting out of again this density, you know, the 3D. How do I raise my vibration to be in a higher state of consciousness? And, and that too, we can do that on this planet easier now than we could decades ago because the support energy is there. And Greg Braden might be able to say it in science. We, I know it's spiritually. There's crystalline portals. So I raise my level of consciousness to lift to, to then, you know, I can see clearer there. I, and that fifth dimension, which is here now, the fifth dimension is all about compassion. Okay. Yet the fifth dimension has gotten a bit I don't know if I want to say even wobbly from the fourth and all of the sphere and everything that's going on. Okay. But the fifth is here, the seventh, I'm touching into the seventh. My mentors are the ninth, the 11th. They're all coming. I'm okay. So back to- up. Cause a lot of people are not going to understand that there's right. first dimension, there's second right. dimensional thinking, there's three dimensional thought process. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. Explain what fifth dimensional thinking is. What is okay, that? So fifth, fifth dimension is a higher um, vibration. Maybe you want to say frequency level of consciousness where we're still in this body. We're in this body. We're just carrying that finer vibration. So if you think of states of being like, um, uh, courage, um, David Hawkins, power versus force. Have you ever read that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Courage, 200, okay? What's the lowest, heaviest um, state is guilt and shame. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's an actual frequency of energy that you're speaking of in terms of like oh megahertz and frequencies. And yes, stuff. yes. Correct. Okay, and then what's the top of the scale? Enlightenment, 700 mm-hmm. to 1,000, okay? Mm-hmm. Peace, love, and joy are right below enlightenment. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm talking, you know, fifth dimension. We can lift into this peace, love, and joy, carrying a higher frequency and still be in body. Mm-hmm. And that creates change on the planet. 
it's insane to think about. And you can understand why a lot of people were, you know, put to the burning cross because of those thoughts 300 years oh, ago. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. Because when you stop and think about it, we were programmed from birth to believe in a certain ideology around, you know, right and wrong. And there's a difference between hell and heaven and all those different things. Yep. So anybody Cause and effect, all of that. Yeah. Yes. Well, and that's yes. a power you can't control. Yeah, and you're taught like if 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 someone has all the power at that time, whether it's through religion or government or whatever, and and these people are, are coming up with all this power, how do you control that? Well, that that goes back to what I'm saying right now. Not to go back to the masks, that's just one piece of it. But you know, my whole thought is is that we're just being controlled, and so is it isn't it at my moral obligation to speak up against this? Because well, I, I just, like how you turn this around. <laughs> I'm not, not going to go into that, but no, I think, but I do see your I see that, and I guess my encouragement would only be. Devo, that what is the energy I'm doing it with? Am I doing it with anger or can I just say, no, this isn't right for me? And can I truly hold, you know, this just this peace about it? Because yeah. well, our I would have energy given him a hug, out. but he wouldn't let me get close on it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Because our, our energy is going out at all times. It's it's not what we say, it is what we're doing. It's our it's our essence. Mm, so, in, so in the beginning of this, you were talking about. You know, it's our job, our role here is to come here and grow and evolve and transcend mm -hmm. into something higher and bigger and better. And then, you know, I, I truly believe that is the case. If you were given the opportunity today and someone said to you, hey, you've transcended, you've grown all you can grow on this plane. It's time to move into something bigger. I'd like to pull you. You kind of come join us wherever we're going to join us. Mm -hmm. Would you choose to take that path or do you still feel like you have more work to do here on this planet? Um, good question. And I just want to... Um start with though not everybody is going to transcend some people I'm came sure. to this planet right to stay in density i mean chose that's their role they're going to stay in a density okay but i don't think forever i think at some no, point they no, just just this, until they grow right 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 but this lifetime might be just to play their role as a density for others to awaken however for myself i know so yes. you believe that some people are just do you believe that everybody has their own consciousness, that it's their job at some point, who knows when, but it's their job to evolve? Or are some people just neutralists in the game and they're there to be catalysts for you in one way or the other? In, in, a, in a respect, yes. Hmm. That, you know, there are 7 billion paths and we don't know that soul path for somebody in this lifetime at this time. Yes. Hmm. And so would I take that? And not and leave my body at this point. I do tell my children I am ready at any moment should I tra transition. However, no, I've got more work to do. Mm -hmm. I'm still early in the game. <laughs> and I've got two young grandbabies. I'd love to see them get a little bigger. And yeah. I love your perspective on that as far as, you know, we don't know what the 7 billion other people, what their role is. And that is, is one mindset that I should have more often when dealing with other people. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I so many of the things that you said today are, you know, so many social issues to help us <laughs> be kinder and gentler and and help others heal. So when I crashed that golf course at Sea Pine, no, we're not going to talk that, about that. that was a catalyst. <laughs> yeah, you were <laughs> neutralizing uh, the process <laughs> of the growth through your actions. How, how much do you think of of whatever our potential is? How much are we using, and how much is is hidden for? Not using you as an example, using the rest of us lay, laymen here. What do you what do you think that the general person is using as far as their 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 talents, their their the possibilities that they have? Before you answer that, I would like to interject and tell you that I think you should stop referring to yourself as a lay person and an under evolved person because I don't think that you are. You're trying to be modest, but honestly, comparatively okay. to some other people's journeys, you're significantly more evolved. Yes. So I think you should embrace that. Just okay. saying. Okay. There's some therapy I just gave her. Thank you. <laughs> Quantum Beautiful. therapy. Yes, yes. <laughs> we all can downplay ourselves. I, I know that one well. <laughs> and now I'm forgetting your question. <laughs> just, just how, how you know, we we all are living on different levels. What what do you think the general person is is how much of their potential are they using? You know, they oh, talk about so great minute, capacity. Right? Isn't it so minute? And you've all seen the um the uh, depiction of the iceberg, right? And it's only that tip above, you know, this is who we are and this is, all, but underneath is really that massive part is who we really are. Mm -hmm. And then I think of like our, um, the DNA, we're at a time where we're shifting our DNA from <laughs> carbon to crystalline and our immune system is even our maybe 60%. We have the capacity to have an immune system that's way better than it is right now. So overall, 
yeah, there's <laughs> so much there too. So overall, I think we're all using so little of our capacity just than what is all there. And yet it's all there. We can access it. It's all there. So how, all how do we access it? All within us. Do we act, how do we access it? And what, how do you, because you are out there teaching and, and, and helping and instructing and, and lifting people up, how do, you, how do you replenish yourself? How do you fill your bucket? How do you, how do you increase oh. your, your power, your strength, all of that? Beautiful. That is so vital. We all need that. And um, I'm, I'm very careful, number one, how I eat, right? Um, I, I eat very clean, um, no animal products, you know, no, nothing, no dairy, all of that. I have to be in nature. It's partly why I'm where I am right now. I, you, just being in that nature energy, I can step out my door. I'm in green. I'm on water. It's um, quiet for me is big. You know, um, some people, it's pets. My pet is wonderful. Um, Sometimes for some people, you know, just sitting in a bubble bath to recharge. But usually um, some so form of meditation, quiet time. How do I connect with who Patty is besides this part that gets so engaged during the day? Uh, that's funny you mentioned this. I'm going to have to look up the book. I was just reading and listening to a podcast on pets. Mm -hmm. And it's made me really stop to think because we have three really crazy, unique animals in our yes. house. We've yeah. got puppies and now a kitten that we rescued from a ditch. And we were just talking yesterday on how unique their personalities are. They yeah. specifically are completely different creatures. But I was listening to this podcast. Not necessarily well behaved. <laughs> yeah, I was listening to this podcast and I forget the name of the author. Um, I think his name is David Icke. You ever heard of this guy, David Icke? No, no. Mm -mm. He's an English, he's way out there on a totally different planet. But he was talking about, and his theory was that if Those he, are the type of people you like, though. Uh, <laughs> he was talking about. I'm on board. <laughs> he was talking about if we didn't, if we had not, if humans didn't have pets, and this began with us, with wolves, like we we mm -hmm. tamed a wolf and that's. Oh, it. yes. And he was saying that if we didn't have, and then horses, et cetera. Yeah. He's been saying that. It, in his, I'm going to go even deeper, but he was saying that if we didn't have pets as part of our pedagogy, our life, that humans would not have evolved to where we are. And then he went one step even weirder, which you're probably going to like, <laughs> that about 25,000 years ago, there was absolutely no physical evidence of humans and pets living side by side. And then suddenly out of nowhere, which also, by the way, is the same time that our DNA completely changed, humans had pets. And his theory was that we were given animals farm animals, goats, et cetera. Like this is the story of Noah, by the way. And that animals were given to us so that we could start to evolve at a different level. And that it was completely not part of our pathway. It, there, was an, there was an intercession mm -hmm. and our mm -hmm. DNA was mutated. We were given pets. We were given crops that we were taught to grow. That Suddenly 25,000 years ago, none of this existed anywhere in any yep. fossil record. And yep. then bam, overnight it's there. Pets farming, cultivation, all mm -hmm. these things. Just like yes. Life. Who helped us, right? Oh, absolutely. I love all that. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. I, I, you know, I do travels to certain places and looking, you know, how did we build this? We, we were here then and all that. But I love that. And I just wanted to mention, going back to Hawkins scale with the levels of consciousness, so your beautiful dog wagging his tail is vibrating at 500 unconditional love. Your cat purring, right? They're helping. They're they're, you know, they drop down in two hundreds other times, but when they're happy, that vibration that is is so healing. No wonder they're bringing them into places to help heal people. And and yeah. his theory, he's like, if you just, if you're honestly, he, he he was saying, and one of the best ways to cure your depression is just go sit with your dog under a tree somewhere and just sit yeah. there and pet it and let it play with yeah, you. Yeah, like, let the, that unconditional love. Yeah, he's like, I can guarantee you, in about ten minutes, you're not going to be feeling as depressed as you were. Just go outside and play with your dog. And then when you stop and think about it, as basal as it sounds, it's true. Like Absolutely. when was the last time you just sat with Dudu and was like, yeah, this is kind of funny, right? So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my cats used to lick my tears when I was in grief after my, you know, they'd come up and they just keep licking my tears. I mean, how tender and beautiful is that? You know, they're... some say that um, uh, divine beings, you know, masters come in animal form. Some say that. Yeah. The Anunnaki. You familiar with this? No, no. We didn't, we didn't that, have that, more conversations. That sounds like a, a meal. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the whole like we're going completely down rabbit hole, but the whole story of Noah's Ark and, and Christianity and all like Jesus was, was real. He existed. The story that they're telling is not real. But like there's some theories out there that say that our DNA was modified by a race called the Anunnaki. And it's in scripture. If you go back, go back way, way back into oh, Enochian. It's isn't it the Enochian? Oh, I say Anunnaki, I guess you could say. Oh, okay. Now if we talk Enochian, I'm I, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. That could be, it could be the same then. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so, so you're back to my original question before Lisa took us down that rabbit hole was you, you have more work to do. You, you're not taking that choice. Right. So, yes. Okay. Yeah. So I thank you for this time. And that's part of it is, you know, reaching out to more people to, to do my work. And if anybody feels or resonates with, with me, that's, that's, you know, most of my clients and students just, they know. They just, they feel, they go, oh, there's something interesting. I've had the craziest ways people find me. And you go, oh, who's at work there, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You talked a little bit earlier when we were talking about repressing and not working through the pain. And there's lots of ways that you can do that. Obviously, most of it needs to be emotional, meditative work on our own. But you referenced Dan Gortner, and he does um, psychedelics, plant-based treatments. He does ayahuasca ceremonies and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, What's the difference between going through an ayahuasca ceremony or taking mushrooms or smoking weed than, I guess, let me see if I can get this out. What's the difference between doing those sorts of treatments, which have an exponential effect on who you become afterwards? Technically, I've never done that. I've only done, I've smoked marijuana, but I've never done ayahuasca or mushrooms or anything like that. Mm -hmm. There are some people that would argue you're doing the exact same thing you're telling you not to do, that you're repressing something, you're hiding or you're masking. Like, What's your opinion on all of that? You know, again, um, and I'm not an expert on plant medicine by any means, but um, it's the consciousness in it that goes into it, right? Mm -hmm. um, because many people are, again, doing that to not look at their traumas or let's just do this because I'll feel happy and good and I'll lift. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's bad or wrong at all. It's just what's their consciousness? What's all of that? That intention is powerful. Mm -hmm. I've done two San Pedro journeys and we are extremely, and this is in Ecuador, in a setting where it's indigenous there, grows there, <clears throat> and it's grown with love, high vibe. It's grown, we cultivate it, we put intention into it. It's done very small setting where um, you're being supported. It's not these mass groups of people and you don't know the energy of going into that plant. You know, that, that, that's very real that if, um, and there's all the studies there too, you know, that our intention with anything that's food and going into us is going to affect us. So um, I, you know, and I've done it, it was to lift greater into love. Right. Um, and I had I, I had beautiful life changing. What, what is this that you did? What is it called? San Pedro. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. You I'm broke up. I didn't hear it when you said it. Oh, OK. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I did a San Pedro journey twice and um, very powerful. And each journey is very different depending on what's my intention as I'm going into that. Right. And and I wanted to this last time, it's, uh, I wanted to even go deeper into body, spirit union and i had to unwind and look at some dark shadow work and so that can come up it's not always just beautiful lifting even though that's there too and i saw lots and experienced a lot of beautiful healing i whatever my intention was what is what came forward so does that make sense yeah no it makes perfect sense i love the answer but aren't you know all of your experiences are necessary in that way aren't they not whether know. it's whether it's you know light and easy or something that just needs to be undiscovered or discovered and uplifted. You have a nice profile. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really stand this close to you on this. <laughs> no, we're awkwardly close. <laughs> so, if it ha has being in a Zoom capacity, are you still seeing clients in a physical one-on-one? -on -one? Is that something? I do know? some. I do some, but the majority now is Zoom. And, and, and you're still able to do what you do, your clairvoyance, your aura reading. You're still able to do all of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is one of the gifts and the blessings of technology. You know, it, <laughs> is it does bring, you know, the, you know, everybody, you know, we can connect a little easier and I can do my work. Um, and yeah, it's probably even a little more powerful in person and having them, you know, be tangibly experiencing it. Yet I, 
a lot of the um, testimonials I get are people, everything's at a distance. And Is it like a vampire? I have to invite you in or you can just kind of, the minute you sit down, you can <laughs> hear, see, and understand things about us right now. Well, as an authentic, integrous clairvoyant, I honor yeah. everybody and I don't turn it on unless it's invited. Okay, I'm going to sense and see certain things just generally. But then also, yes, on your end, there's only a certain level you're going to, right? And so when a client signs up for an appointment, um, they've given me permission. And I do my whole scan, and I go like this because I'm seeing and feeling through their chakras. And, um, and I'm doing that from a distance, even before they come into me physically. Because physically, you know, somebody's in front of you and they give you a story. It's so easy to swallow that. But it's their energy that I trust more. So I'm inviting you to look at my energy. Do you think that there's anything that jumps out at you about my energy that is like, whoa, slow your roll or keep it up? How oh, does- oh, go- gosh, yeah. You're, you're, um, let's, how should I put this? You're in a lifetime, it feels like, a very exciting. I mean, you've got a lot of helpers. I don't know how much you want to tap into them, but you've got a boat of helpers around you okay <laughs> it's almost like this portal and um you were you are you're a divine master um i would say you may have the opportunity to go a little deeper and looking at some heart stuff mm-hmm. i know this already i've oh, been pushing yeah. it back for a bit yeah. yeah but i know it's time very good may the right you know the resources for you um i'm gonna do some mushrooms to help me out <laughs> Okay, look at your I'm not, intention. I'm, I'm not joking. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. already beginning That's that process. Beautiful. Okay, beautiful. I just want to encourage you then, you know, look at your intention as you're going into that and call in your helpers and all of that, you know, to, to be as supported. So it's, I, I just, you know, we can learn, you know, through the really hard or through more easy, joyful. Um, and yet um, I like to call in ease and Peace, ease, and joy, right? Grace, can I have this with a little more ease <laughs> so it doesn't have to be so gut-grinding hard? Sometimes it is, but that's often my caveat. With ease and grace and ease, please, guides. <laughs> I know everybody says this, and I, I truly believe it. I, I'm not, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here on this planet. I know uh-huh. I'm supposed to be doing something that's going to have an, a lasting impact. I truly feel that in my core. I just don't know what that is yet. Oh, and don't you believe that you're, par- you're doing that now? I hope so. But Absolutely. I feel like there's something oh. really, I feel like oh. there's something that I have, I don't know how to explain it. Okay. I, I understand that. I mean, I, I believe I, if I'm hearing you correctly, because um, what they're showing, what I'm seeing is um, it's like you're putting a lot of tools into your toolkit. You know, everything's symbolic and metaphoric, um, but, and it's you trusting all those tools that you have and they're in you. And that ties to that heart piece. And um, you're already doing it though. I've watched your other podcast, Steve. You're, you're doing it. So how much is what? Hmm. You okay. In 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 my world, tears are always good. I tell all my clients, tears are good. You okay? No. You go. <laughs> How much is? <laughs> Sorry. Um, Sorry if I'm sharing too much. No, it's good. It's okay. powerful. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 and I find tears are a beautiful thing. You know, I, I get what I call soul tears when I, it's a deep, true message. And so that's my, yes, this is it. And so they're comfortable. How much is, bear with me as I bumble through this question because I struggle with it a lot. The law of attraction, self-manifestation, consciousness is really just a dream. Everything else is whatever you basically want. You can create yourself. I understand all that. And in fact, they're now starting to prove this through real science that molecules, DNA, physically alter when you first as you observe them. So absolutely. There's quantum physics, yeah. quantum okay. physics, like they're yeah. physically, and they've known this by the way, for a shit ton of time, they've just been repressing this and not telling us the whole Higgs bosom theory, a whole generator that they're doing over in uh, Northern Europe. That whole idea is not to split DNA. It's to further test this whole idea. Well, basically they want to weaponize that whole concept. So how much of 
manifestation. Let me see if I can get this out properly. Okay, so the feeling that I have, can, can I continue here? Mm -hmm. The feeling that I have that I'm supposed to be doing something bigger and better than I've always been doing most of my life and only into the last few years that I've really started to kind there's of- There's your intuition, there's your knowing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so how much of, how much of my path is destiny based and how much of it is me understanding that it's destiny based, but I just want more for myself. I just really want to accomplish something where I can really make a difference in people's lives to actually make this planet better. How much of that is already predestined versus me physically manifesting it because I believe it to be true? Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a I think loaded so. Yeah, yeah, that's, and I, and I don't know if I can really answer that. You know, it's kind of ties to some of the things we touched in on. You know, certain things come back around if we haven't quite grasped that and that opportunity again to go there and to be that. And yet, certain points sometimes it's like, well, no, I woke enough and there's an opportunity to leave. You know, and and on a soul level, we're not conscious of that and we leave. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not quite sure how to answer that question. So you're wondering how much you can change your destiny. I know that I can change my destiny because I believe this is all just a game. I don't think this is real. I'm think, I truly 100% believe that you and I were brought into each other's lives for a reason. Mm -hmm. I believe that Patty is in my life now for a reason that I think mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. And I, I know that I have, I have people that have come to me at a certain time mm -hmm. and they, yeah, I try to let certain people know that they did make a difference the way they came into my life. You know, I think sometimes you need to share that and say you've, you've made a, a huge impact in my life, but there, there's people that, you know, you open your eyes and, and they, they do come to you at the right time. Well, like, you're a perfect example of that. I'm not going to get all like mm -hmm. weird here on it, but you know, I, I was struggling in my life and I was hanging around with the wrong types of people. I had just gotten divorced and I started dating somebody and I was enamored by her and I'm not going to go all crazy with you this, but she was not good for me in any way, shape, or form. And I kept on going home every day thinking this, this woman is not right for me. I, this is not what I got divorced for. This is not what I'm supposed to be doing. And yet, because I was fearful and insecure, I stayed with it. And I just kept going the course, but I kept going home. And you can look at my journals going back five years. I would like, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm dawdling with my life. Get the fuck, get your head the fuck out of your ass and start doing something. And mm -hmm. You, I truly believe that you were brought into my life to help me because the things that I have learned or the things that I have done, the things that I have accomplished in the last three years with you and I doing them together have been massively significant in my growth and my uptick to where I think I'm supposed to be. So um, I do firmly believe that with 100%. And I don't know that I could be in this little journey right now had you not been doing this with me. Truthfully. But I think that that happens all throughout our life, though, Absolutely. doesn't it? And yes. we, choose, we choose to, whether it's a... a bad experience that we've learned and what we consider as a bad experience Absolutely. is just an experience right but it's made us who we are and i think you know you know now that i'm in my 50s um you know you would hear people say you know as a younger person you hear older people which is me say oh you know i would never want to go back to being 20 again and I, i'm like why would you say something as dumb as that but you realize that those experiences and where you are and, and it, not that you know a lot but you sure have had a lot more experiences and know more than you did when you were 20. Well, can I just <laughs> can I just ask Patty to embarrass you for a second, if I may? Because I think, you know... No, I've kind of got this under control. You know, Lisa, <laughs> Lisa, one of the things that Lisa struggles with is her identity on who she is. I don't think you realize how powerful of a person you are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things that I observed from Lisa way back when I first met her through Instagram, by the way, and was like, holy <laughs> fuck, look at the power around that woman. Like, for real, the first thing I said to myself was, holy fuck, look at the power around that woman. And you don't see the sort of stuff from me. You see fake stuff. But I saw it was a real power. It wasn't a fake power. And I, she always struggles with stepping into that power and like doing the things that she's doing now independently as a woman, whether, and I always tell her she's growing her wings, but will you please mm -hmm. tell her? Oh my gosh. That's really will you please tell her and how power she Thank you for sharing. Yes. And you know, that can be a very universal I'm, issue, right? And part of that is this whole feminine and we're now coming into a time with greater feminine and all of that, right? And then we go back to what are some of the beliefs that we took on as that child? You know, what's a woman allowed, you know, around the woman or even as an individual? I had old scripts around, if you talk about yourself, you're being vain and vain's not a good thing, mm -hmm. right? 
you know, so that's these, what are those driving? Like when Diva, you're talking about how it was hard to leave this woman. So that's where we discover, that's part of what I do is help people. What are some of these subconscious patterns and beliefs that are operating that are keeping me from feeling this level of safety versus, oh, being on my own and looking at my stuff. Mm -hmm. And so some of that may be operating, right, um, Lisa, where there's still a little bit of remnants of some of these beliefs. And mm -hmm. I'm still unscripting those, right, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. And um, to really stand, because you are a powerhouse. You're a bright light, huge. I feel like you're a door opener for him. <laughs> You know, like a door opener for you. Absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah. I it just that. shows like a big port door opener for you. But um, I lost her light. There you go. <laughs> Claim it's almost like you orchestrated that up, but you forgot to do the flicker that we talked about beforehand. The flicker. That's it. Oh, I miss <laughs> Very strong. Mm. All right, then. That was a lot. That was fantastic. Do you think that we have, when you're talking about uncovering, because someone said something to me uh, the other day, too, and um, he said, you know, we know all these things inside. We, we have all this knowledge inside of us. You're just basically the key unlocking yes. all yes. these truths and knowledge. and Yes. So we just polishing. You're the gatekeeper. You're the yes. gatekeeper for us. You know, you're each a gatekeeper for yourself. You know, we are, and we're we're it's we're all complete. We're just letting go of all that other stuff that's not who we really are that we've taken on, and no judgment on what we have or the choices we've made. You know, that's another whole thing. All the forgiveness, right? And we mentioned they weren't bad choices. So they were just. Are Are you loving your journey? I know it's not being easy, but are you loving your journey? Yeah, I, I feel very blessed. There's one area of my life that um, is taking a while to come into fruition that I had to, um, had, to be, had to come to terms with and be very happy being the single woman I am, enjoying my life. And I feel very blessed. And it'll even be better when that awakened partner shows up. What, what, do, you, what do you like most about what you're contributing? to the world i love helping people believe in themselves and see their light mm -hmm. i mean you know i can be down and i'll go in on a session with a client and i leave always feeling better you know and as each one of us i just wanted to just reiterate kind of tied to devo you know saying he's he's going into this his own healing here is that when we heal you're not only healing for you you're healing for so many others you're healing for your children. You're healing around you. Um, and they can show that in science too. And, you know, we get um, from the spiritual dimension um, answers on that too. You know, when you lift and really live from your heart and carry that higher state of uh, consciousness, you open the door for 100,000 other people. So, I mean, that's what kept me going. You know, oh, if I keep getting through all this muck that I've taken on and um, wow, my kids will have an easier life, or you know, they have the opportunity to live. Mm, the whole cascade of that. It's yeah. interesting too the way you've said that. You know, there was, and I'm quite fine thinking that I'm introverted and everything like that. But you understand that from us being sequestered there for a while and not really supposedly having contact with people and that connection. It's that connection with what we do that makes us love life even more, our experiences with other people that increases our vibe, isn't it? Without that, you just, I feel like I'm just, I'm damned and I'm just, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. Right. Yeah. I'll never retire, retire. Cause what I do is who I am mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in some capacity, you know, it's, so. We could talk to her all day. Patty, you, um, um, you have one gift to leave before you do your journey is over what is it you're giving see the light that you are see the divine being that you are you're more than what you, what you believe or what we think yeah. how can people get more of you how can they connect with you and and go to the next step with you because I think that everybody is going to, going to everybody that hears this or sees this or you know they're going to be as enchanted with you as we are. So tell Thank us how you. we can get in touch with you. Yes, it's it's that long name that Devo started. <laughs> 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 it's 
<laughs> it's the Patty Markham Peterson, you know, um, Patty with a Y, Markham Peterson on Instagram. Um, uh, my webpage is pattymarkhampeterson.com. Markham, M A R K H A M, Peterson with an O. Um, I should show up. I've got some YouTube things. You know, I started those to help my clients. There's some beautiful practices for working with the inner child when we're feeling stuck or when we get defensive. There's usually a tie to that hurting inner child. Um, I'm on Facebook, Expanding Hearts, or Patty Markham Peterson. And yeah, if I come up with a shorter, easier name, I can't just, you know, do the the share or the Oprah, but <laughs> it'd be easier. <laughs> I like you said authentic integrous. Mm -hmm. That's good too. Mm, very <laughs> <laughs> Vital. <laughs> Mm. Daddy, I appreciate you coming on. I've enjoyed this conversation with you. I, I'm going to stay in touch with you. Actually, I, I, there's a couple of things I haven't even gotten to ask you that I'd like to dive into. So. Thank you. You know, I appreciate you two so much. The work you're doing and the way we met serendipitously. Oh, we crossed paths, right? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. And so I'm grateful to you both too. Keep going. You're doing a lot of great work. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been fantastic. You good? Really Hold yourself good. together. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's always okay in my corner. <laughs> okay in my corner. Have a fantastic Thank day. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.